there is a video explaining the rules of these speed runs. If you don't care, here you go. This is CSP. Let's make a new file so we can start animating. We're going to go to File, New. All right, we're not illustrating. We are animating. So we're going to go to this little film thing right here. I have my dimensions set to 4K, but you don't have to do that. I just have a good graphics card. So resolution, this is how high quality the image will be. The more DPI, the more detail you can get. Uh, honestly, keep it at 350 or 600. I have it at 600, 1200 makes the program lag. 24 frame rate, that's perfect. Okay, let's see our workspace. Our workspace is all types of stuff. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this a tad smaller and we have to reveal our animation timeline. That's going to be to the right of our color wheel right over here. When it click that arrow, this reveals our timeline. It's also ugly. Right click any of these layers. We're going to go to thumbnail size. None. That looks much better. Now let's adjust our layer timeline because that's even uglier. We're going to move this toolbar to the right. Then we're going to move this toolbar by going over here. Move that to the right. Click these two arrows. Now those are gone and we have our beautiful, beautiful layers. So I'm gonna make this smaller until, there we go. We want that blue square there. That'll come into play much later. That is our workspace. Let's get into our hotkey. So we're gonna to go to file, shortcut settings. So CSP does us the wonderful disservice of having us no hotkeys because this is a tacked on feature to the program. So we have to make them all. Here are the ones I made. So please make these your hotkeys so you can make your life easier as you learn to animate in the software. Animation folder. Animation folders are our layers in, in uh, CSP. I made that alt n a new cell this is for straight ahead you have to hit this so you can keep animating without having to click this little icon over here so i made that alt forward slash this is within context of the timeline to cut copy and paste frames so cut is numpad 8 copy is numpad forward slash and paste is numpad star let's keep going down to see what else i made so play and stop i made numpad 0 and to start a loop i made it numpad period next we have going back in the frame is control comma and going forward is control period or left key or left carrot key and right carrot key you'll see it on your keyboard next we have changing the frame rate numpad 5 inserting a frame for extending exposures is numpad plus and deleting a frame is numpad minus anything else enabling our onion skin alt o beautiful hotkey and to change those settings we made it shift alt o and i believe that is all for our animation hotkey so we're going to hit okay click that let's look at our animation folders. So animation folders are our layers, but CSP is in default in raster. So we have to make a vector layer to make our lines vector. So when we go to new animation folder, we're gonna name this bitch vector. We're gonna go over here to our actual layers. We're gonna make a new layer by right clicking layer, vector layer, name that zero zero so it doesn't fuck up your timeline, okay? And we can tell it's a vector layer by having that little square. So now whenever I hit alt slash, we're gonna see that it adds one here and they're both vector layers. So that's why we wanna do that. Next, the brush tool. The brush tool is honestly very self-explanatory here. All our brushes are here on the left and there's sub brushes within these tabs. CSP makes this very easy to read. There's not much I have to explain here. So I'm gonna just move on to stabilization. So for stabilization, there's also not much here. Uh, if you click this in, it's just default stabilize all the time. And if you have this clicked in, you can either have your pen be stabilized when you move slower or when you move faster. I typically have it on when I move slower. That's just a me thing. All right, let's move to our timeline. Our timeline, we've basically hotkeyed everything here. There's not much to worry about, but you're not gonna remember that. So this is to add new timelines. Don't worry about that. That's for scenes. This is to increase the size of our frames in our timeline to get more specific and nitty gritty. This is to go back to the first frame, go back a frame, play, go forward a frame, and go back to the last frame. This is to turn on the loop, so I have it off right now. This is to add an animation layer. This is to add an animation cell. This is if you add a layer over here and you want to make it a cell, you'd click this button. And this is delete an exposure. And this little box with a dotted box is our onion skin. We can click that or press Alt O. So let's get into our onion skin. I'm going to press Alt O. Then I'm going to press Alt Shift O to adjust these settings. Because you can't adjust it via the timeline. You have to adjust exposures up here. So I have it set to 1 1. And my previous frame is red. And my next frame is green. This is more of a personal thing, but you can do whatever the hell you want. Okay, let's get into animating. So here we go. All right, cool, there's an animation. Let's play this back by hitting, oh fuck, I didn't even do it on the right, that's fine, who gives a fuck? So, we're gonna hit zero. Oh, actually, I wanna make it a loop, so I'm gonna hit period. Now let's make this. There's still too many frames, so let's fix this loop by moving these little lines over here and end it at 20, so now we have all I need. Awesome, that's how you create a loop. Now, this is way too fast, so let me adjust my frame it to make it look kinda watchable by pressing numpad five. So let's make this on twos by making it FPS. I'm going to go like that. Eh, it looks okay. But let's go back to 24 and then let's adjust these exposures, man. So, enter. Okay. Let's 
All right, let's play this bitch because we just our exposures. Awesome, this looks great. Now let's get into our fill tool. So we click this little paint bucket or press G. Always make your fills on a different line or on a different layer. That way you don't fuck your whole project up. So we're gonna make a new frame by pressing that. And then I have it set to refer to other layers. That way I can color these frames without having to worry about much. So there are a few ways to get different colors in this program. First off, we have just the color wheel and adjusting this like that, fairly simple or you can click this for a color palette. And if you're into analog making colors, it also has a feature like here. So we can go make yellow, put blue right there, and then we'll put green like this. And I'm gonna mix my paints and then we get different colors. So there are some pretty cool coloring options within CSP. Let's make a hypothetical. Let's say I call, color all these things red, right? If I wanna change the color of these, I'm gonna have to manually change all of them. Psych, I made it on a different layer and I can monochrome the layer to make them a different color and there's a sub color here so if you have some different nuanced colors you can use that as well it's a fairly useful tool for coloring and just changing anything in general i love it select tool insert in order to move things you're gonna have to click this little box icon so you can either click that on the select tool or it's up at the top and you can click all and move all the strokes at once who gives a shit all right so classic select where you re it resets every time you do if let's say you do this and you want to select some more you can click click select in addition to let's say you select too much you can do so select subtraction and if you want to select within select click that that is basically the select tool control point control point is for our vector lines so let's go to this circle over here if i want to adjust line work like this you can do it with control point this only works with vector lines so this is a tool for that i personally just read a line that read a line that's just a me thing so okay importing you can only really drag p and g's into this so anything else you have to go to the import tool import image import audio and import movie it's a fairly simple tool there's not much to get into here so let's get into finally exporting i don't want that color so we're gonna go to file export animation there's a couple options here exporting movie just exports only in mp4 or avi so i'm gonna do this it only exports in 1080p so that is a max so that's why you might want to download open tools so you can export in a higher resolution or you can just export every single animation cell as a separate png frame or an animated gif so let's watch our animation Fuck the PB, 3D models. So if this function isn't already in CSP, you have to download it from the Clip Studio launcher, but it should already be there. So on your layers tabs, there should be three double layers in the top left corner. Click the leftmost one or until you see this bar. Click the fifth folder with little people, choose your fighter and drag it onto the canvas. Left click rotates the camera, right click zooms in, clicking the wheel pans, and scrolling makes the lens wider or flatter. Then just click whatever limb you want and pose. That is the 3D function. As I said in the rules, I am not even scratching the surface of these softwares. I'm just trying to help you animate a ball. You know, you have any corrections? Leave it in the comments. Help people out. Be nice. I hope this helped. And if you want to see other runs or even more of my videos, just click any of these playlists or click my channel. Thank you so much.